Hello, sir. A very good morning and a heartly welcome to you. We are Shambhavi and Johan on behalf of Rukmani Devi Institute of Advanced Studies, affiliated with Guru Gobind Singh in the Prest University, are here today and really grateful to getting a chance to interview you. So now, without any further ado, let's just begin with the interview. So, sir, to begin with, could you please uh, tell us something about yourself and about your company and what exactly is this digital gold? All right. Uh, very pleased to be here, Shambhi. Uh, so let me begin with the first question. So primarily, I'm a business development and strategy professional with over a decade of experience in uh, diverse industries. So I started my career with tech services, then I joined a staffing company, then I joined a digital transformation company. My last company was an end-to-end SaaS company dealing in services like hyper local marketplaces and hyper local delivery and workforce management solutions and uh, currently i'm working as the ceo of a company called my gold card uh, to address your second question my gold card deals with buying and selling of gold physical gold in a digital manner so using our platform you know you can buy sell gift both to individuals and corporates and you can also redeem whatever you have bought uh, through our platform we have close to 600 redemption partners all over india and uh, primarily this is what uh, you know my cold cart is all about of course there is much more to it but if i have to conclude it is it deals in uh, you know buying selling gifting and redemption of physical gold in a digital manner Okay, uh, sir. So our next question will be, uh, sir, what are the key USPs of, uh, when compared to the digital gold? So the key USPs of physical uh, digital gold as compared to physical gold, right? Uh, so see, generally, uh, I, I'll say it's not exactly digital gold. As I mentioned, it's investing in physical gold digitally, right? Uh, so the key USPs, there are four pillars in the digital gold industry, as we say, the, the first one is called purity, right? You want to know how pure, you know, is the gold that you are purchasing. So my company, my gold card, we deal in four nines of purity. So it means 99.99% purity of gold and silver we deal in. The second pillar is something which is called security. Now, one of the disadvantages of storing physical gold is security. You, know, you never know what can happen tomorrow. But when you are dealing in physical, when you are dealing in digital gold, so the physical gold is, is stored in secure lockers at the back end, and your name is assigned to whatever you have purchased. So there is no concern of security as well. You can get it delivered to your houses, to your homes as well. And they are, we have a delivery, we have, we have a secure delivery partners who do that, right? The third pillar is redemption. Now, you know, you can purchase gold, you know, for the investment point of view, you, you, want, you want to invest in digital gold, so you are purchasing it. But many of the users, they want to ultimately buy something out of it, right? Like you have these programs, these gold saving programs, which are run by leading jewelry chains. So you need to have a extensive redemption network and you must have this both online and offline. So this is another, uh, you know, pillar of, uh, uh, you know, the digital gold. So we have close to 600 plus redemption partners, both online and offline combined. Now, the last pillar uh, of the digital gold is at what price you are getting it. So currently, you know, you go to Amazon, and uh, you know you search for purchasing gold coins or gold bars you'll see that you know for the same one gram or for the same 10 gram you're getting 10 different sort of prizes right so there is no stability over there so as far as the cost point is concerned i sell the cheapest and the most purest form of gold now the question to answer is how come you're selling the cheapest gold and uh, so let me go back a little, uh, uh, you know, back. So my gold cart is part of Kundan Group, which is a $4 billion company. And we own the largest refinery in India. So this is why, you know, I'm able to run my operations efficiently. And since I own my own refinery, I'm able to, 
sell it at a slightly lower price as compared to the rest of the players in the market. So I, I hope that answers your question. Yes, sir. Okay, so the next next question is, could you please tell us a bit about your first job, uh, your first experience and uh, how you managed your first work profile? Absolutely. Uh, so I graduated out of Pune University in 2012 when I studied electronics engineering. Now I got selected in all these Infosys and TCS of the world, but I wanted to pursue something in management. Because I know this is what, uh, you know, this is where I see myself, let's say, five years down the line, 10 years down the line, managing, uh, you know, heading a business unit. I, I thought I was really good at it. So I chose to join a very small company, which is based out of Delhi. And it was an industrial automation. And I was working as a project manager in the founder's office. And uh, yeah, and post that, uh, you know, I went to I am Indore. I studied management, and uh, uh, you know, I, I my bread and butter became management of large strategic programs and uh, you know business units. So, sir, uh, why my gold card, and what makes you decide to become a CEO there? I'm sorry, pardon me, please. Uh, so, so the next question is, uh, why my gold card, and what makes you decide to become a CEO there? All right. Uh, so see, digital gold, uh, like crypto, is a new together. And uh, I chose this company because I saw massive potential in the digital gold industry overall. I think particularly, uh, you know, during the COVID times, there is a rapid shift in propensities of the end users to consume products and services in an online fashion. And I saw that this company is trying to fulfill or remove that exact bottleneck, right? I mentioned about how digital gold compares with the physical gold part of it. And I thought that there is great potential in this idea. The second reason is, of course, you know, I look at, I, I looked at the industry, I looked at the company, but I also looked at whether my past profile would do justice to this role. And I thought that over the past several years, I have you know, accommodated or I have consolidated all those skills in me that would help me to do this job in an awesome way. So the, these were the two prime motivations, uh, you know, in view of which I thought that you know, I'll do good in this and I chose to join this company. Okay. So, uh, so while researching about you, we found out that you started your career in back in the year 2012 and when you would have been just our age. So what are your key learnings from your experiences, the Thank challenges you have faced in your career and how did you overcome it and what all are your learnings from it? All right, Shambi, can you repeat the question? I think uh, I uh, sort of lost you in between. Okay, Apologies I've... for that. Okay, so I was saying while researching about you, we found out uh, that you started your career back in the year 2012. And you would have been just our age. So what are your key learnings from your experiences, um, the challenges you have faced in your career, and how did you overcome it? What are your learnings from it? All right, my key learnings. So on a lighter note, I still believe I'm more or less your age only. I am only 30 years old. Uh, but as for my, as my key learnings are concerned, I think uh, one thing which I learned uh, during very early stages of my professional career was to focus on improving communication and interpersonal skills, right? And by communication, I do not mean speaking good English, right? In my opinion, communication is getting the message across to the other person, right? And interpersonal skills is nothing but evaluating on what that message should be. It is something to think about, right? And the second thing uh, which I learned uh, you know, during uh, my professional tenure is to become a specialist, 
rather than a generalist. I think especially during the initial stages of anyone's career, one should focus on becoming a specialist. And, uh, you know, it can be business development, it can be marketing, it can be operations, but always focus on becoming a specialist. In my opinion, the industry do not, uh, you know, value generalist. So uh, I think these were, uh, these were my two key learnings. Oh, thank you, sir. Sir, now we, we would like to know how does your typical working work day begin uh, CEO looks like and what according to you are the must have qualities that a person must have to become a successful CEO? All right. Uh, so see, I, I think this is more or less uh, related to your previous questions. Uh, I feel the quality can be anything and everything, but you should be specialized in the way, work area where you aspire uh, to, uh, you know, work in. So if you if you like business development, if you see yourself working in business development or in marketing, you should know any everything and anything about business development. I, I, I feel the second thing is maybe I can add a little bit more to this always be target driven in anything in, in anything and everything whatever area you are choosing so you know business development sales of course you know targets there are very straightforward everyone knows that sales and business development has uh, uh, you know targets assigned to it but even in marketing even in operations you know you should have kpis assigned uh, to yourself and you should have target on those kpis and your objective should be that, you know, let's say if your KPI, if I talk about marketing, if your KPI is that I will bring this much traffic to my website, you should, you should focus on hitting this KPI and achieving it in the next month. That's how, you know, you're going to improve in the coming time. So if I have to conclude it, I'll say measure each and everything. The way you can measure is you can devise KPIs because as long as you cannot measure, you cannot improve on that. Right. And uh, coming to the former part of your question on what my, uh, you know, day looks like. So being the CEO of the organization, I think uh, I have to deal uh, with assigning KPIs and meeting these KPIs for the departments, whether it is business development, whether it is marketing, whether it is finance, or, you know, whether it is operations. So I think they uh, are a lot of brainstorming meetings that I have with each of these departments. We focus on what should we, you know, how should we improve, you know, what should we eliminate, what should we reduce, what should we create. And uh, I think broadly, this is what my entire day is all about. Okay, so, uh, so being an experienced professional in the industry, um, how did your educational qualification help you shaping your career? I am sorry. Can you pardon me, please? Again, you got a little cut off. So being an experienced professional in the industry, uh, how did your educational qualification help you shaping your career? All right. So see, I feel uh, you join country more or less you know you're taught the same thing uh, education helps you in a way that it gives you a broad level understanding of what marketing is uh, because I, I, I feel uh, I, you know they do tell you theoretically on what you are supposed to do in a function but the hands-on part the practicality of it is a little different but you know again it also depends upon how you approach you know your education uh you know what are the key things that you are doing in this so for instance if if i give you my example i did not score very good grades uh, you know during any of my graduations or post graduation but i won a lot of competition i won a lot of national level competitions due to which i became hands-on you know in the specialization uh, which, uh, uh, you know, I studied. I graduated in business and marketing strategy. Now, I did not score very good grades in that. In fact, in some of the subjects, I just passed. But I won the maximum number of competitions, uh, you know, uh, during my uh, educational years. So 
again uh, you know uh, uh, it depends upon how you approach a problem statement what what are you making out of it because see at the end of the day you should know that all the all the books are more or less same across all the institutes in marketing you are going to study kotler in business development you are you are going to study something else uh, but what extra are you bringing on to the table because as soon as you are going to you know step into the professional world no one is going to ask you that okay tell me what are the seven p's or marketing or you know no one is going to ask you okay explain me the porter model and you know how are you going to uh, analyze the industry or how are you going to evaluate the threat of competition in your industry right so it's all hands on it's all kpi driven it's all target driven and that is how you know you should approach your educational years as well if you're learning if you're graduated in marketing go ahead and work on a few marketing tools right if uh, you know you're working if you're uh, specializing in business development go ahead and do a few business development internships does not matter even if you're doing it for free but that's where you know you're going to get hands on experience and that's where you're going to you know understand what what really you know happens on the ground okay sir sir now uh, i would like to know what goals does your company have for the next 5 years all right uh, so a very tricky question to answer but if i have to conclude it we want to be the go to brand or or the go to name uh, for buying selling gifting of uh, uh, you know digital gold so that is we have a few players in the industry but i want that tomorrow if someone is saying digital gold that person that person should think of my gold card you know like you have colgate when someone says that brush your teeth you think of colgate right so colgate is no longer a noun it's a verb so that's what i want for my company in the next 5 years okay uh, so what do you think are the contemporary issues prevailing in the industry that you're working in do you see any trends or challenges Uh, i got the first part of your question what are the contemporary issues uh, so let me answer that i think the major issue is that digital gold as an industry is pretty nascent so uh, you know uh, rather you know you go to 10 of your friends i am pretty sure that not more than one out of 10 people would be aware about what digital gold is so i think right now we are still trying to develop the market and post that the market penetration is uh, you know going to happen so i think the, these are the this is the major challenge and the second challenge i i'll i'll say is educating the customers but again it is more or less related to the first point people know about physical gold but they do not know how to invest in physical gold in a digital way you know many of them uh, things that you know it is just a fraud scheme but it's not really so uh you know I, i think that is the major challenge with existing the industry can you please repeat your second question uh sir do you see any trends or any challenges in the industry any new trends trends uh, so your question is that do i see any trends in the uh, in this industry sir yes sir all right uh, uh yeah so see uh, honestly speaking as i mentioned we are still at a stage where we are you know we want to educate the customer where we are still focusing on consumer awareness of digital gold as a whole as far as trends are concerned uh, you know i uh, you know of course there are there are trends here and there but i i feel the industry overall is pretty nascent i do see you know if i look at the last 5 years i do see that the industry is growing at a tremendous rate so every month we are sort of uh, you know exceeding our revenues as compared to the previous month every month we are adding you know thousands if not lakhs of customers on our platform and uh, you know because consumers are becoming more digital CV, I, I, I'll say, and they are exploring new ways in which you can invest. You know, so I definitely, you know, 
see this pumping up in the next five and 10 years as well. And uh, yeah, so I think, uh, does that answer your question? Yes, sir. sir. Thank you. Sir, right. so does Thank your you. company does your company offer any internship opportunities or training for management students? So definitely. So we do not have a very structured program as such, but based upon the needs of the organization, we do offer internship. We do, or we, I, I, I won't say that we have a training program per se, but I believe, uh, you know, right now, every company and particularly startups are looking to have a bang for their buck. So the training won't be similar to the training that, you know, you're getting at a management school. It's all, you know, as I mentioned earlier, hands on training. So, you know, you learn as you work, as you get your hands in multiple departments on the job training, if I may say so. So this is, you know, how you train. And I feel uh, that is the best way in which you should approach training as well. As I mentioned earlier, the best way of training is go ahead and do as many internships as you can during my during your MBA time. If I tell you about myself, uh, when I was studying our time in Dor, uh, we had, uh, uh, you know, we had a necessity of one training, one summer training. But I went ahead and I did five contributed throughout the entire course of the program and that's how you know I, I feel it helped me uh, uh you know it helped me sort of push my learning curve in a much uh, faster way okay so uh so given the unpredictability of the covid 19 situation uh how should one be prepared to stay relevant in the job market all right. Uh, so see, one thing, as I mentioned earlier as well, there will always be demand for specialists, particularly in the management arena. So focus on becoming a specialist. And I, I'll say think beyond the job market. I think many of us, I personally started investing very late in my professional career. So, you know, devise ways to create multiple income streams. You know, whether it is YouTube or whether it is through investing in stock markets or whether it is, uh, you know, investing in the crypto market or whatever it is, you know, wherever you want to invest. in. I'm, I'm not giving any sort of an investment advice, but it is very important that think beyond the job market. Right. And uh, focus on creating multiple income streams. If you feel that, you know, you're good at giving interviews, uh, try out. Uh, you know, try a device, uh, uh, I'll say a curriculum and find out your target market, give training, interview trainings and GD trainings, uh, uh, you know, to your target market. And people, they earn a lot in this. Look at players like Career Launcher, they started small and, uh, uh, you know, and look at where they are right now. So my advice is that, uh, you know, think beyond the job market. As far as the job market is concerned, as I mentioned, uh, you know, focus on becoming a specialist and, uh, you know, always work on your communication and interpersonal skills. Always try to read a little bit about the industry where you are working in. So my ideology is that, you know, if you're given a job to, you know, watch utens utensils, uh, you know, in a restaurant, you should one year down the line, you should learn about the entire, you should know about the entire restaurant business. But you should be a specialist in washing dishes off that because that is your bread and butter. So I think that's uh, my recommendation to all of you. So, and I think uh, you have answered our last question already, but still. Yes, okay. uh, that's what I was going to say. So, sir, uh, as an experienced professional and you yourself being a management graduate from such a reputed institute, what would be your strong, uh, what be your uh, suggestion or the biggest advice for the management students and for us? All right. So, you know, I think, as you said, I've already answered your last question. Uh, and I, I think my advice stands the same. Okay. 
So thank you, sir. And with this, we'll be wrapping up with this interview session. But before that, I would like to thank you, Mr. Pranav Kark, for taking out your valuable time from your busy schedule for this session. It was a great time knowing you and having you here with us. We hope you enjoyed getting interviewed by us. Uh, and thank you so much for being a par part again. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, definitely, I enjoyed the uh interacting with you and uh, i'm pleased to be here please keep in touch thank you definitely thank sir. You, sir sir if there isn't any internship opportunity please let us know yes yeah, sir. absolutely so uh, you know very soon i'm working on creating a program i'm working uh, i i'll say the selection process will be one of a kind okay. and uh, I think it will touch upon all the points which are just raised on how you can be hands on. Uh, I'll definitely keep in touch and, uh, you know, I'll inform you on the same. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day. Yeah. You too, sir. Thank you. you.